Welcome back everyone. In today's video we're going to be making one of the skins from Fortnite, the Galaxy skin. And you can see the, the results here in front of you. It's going to be pretty cool and you don't really need much to get started. Just uh, a cloud uh, a cloud material or texture which just looks like this. Just some clouds that I just generated in Photoshop. And a Spacescape uh, DDS Skybox file which I just generated in Spacescape. There'll be a, a mirrored link to download that in the description. I've just made it really colorful. Lots of nebula and stuff mm -hmm. going on. And uh, the only thing that we need to check here is to come down to level of detail, set it to no mid maps and the texture group to skybox. And that should be all that gets us these crisp, sort of very, very clean, uh, uncompressed, high resolution uh, stars and space and stuff. Okay, with that sorted, let's just right click and make ourselves a material. Call it galaxy mat. And then we'll open it up. Okay, I'll just drag it over here and now we can get started. So I guess the first thing we'll do is just drop in our, our Galaxy Skybox here and we'll also find over on the left here, we'll go to Mannequin, then Character, Mesh, find the SK Mannequin, just have it selected in the content browser and then click this right hand Preview Mesh button and we'll swap out our Preview Mesh with the, with the Mannequin. Cool, so we can see how it works uh, on an actual on an actual player model. Okay, with that sorted, let's uh, get started with our galaxy texture. Now to begin, I would highly recommend going back and watching my uh, space scene video so that you have a bit of a grounding on how to handle uh, skyboxes and the kind of things that you need to do to make them work in, a, in an actual material. And we're not gonna need to do anything to the galaxy material, to the, the material attributes here. We'll just leave them all as default. But to make our skybox texture work as intended, we'll have to find the reflection vector world space node plug this into the UVs of our texture and we'll also need a three vector just set to all zeros to act as our custom world normal. And in fact, we can convert this to a parameter. If we call it world vector, then we can manipulate this in the, uh, in the instance material later just to have a look at how that affects the way that the skybox displays. And then we'll go down here, we'll plug this straight into emissive and we should see the effect in our preview mesh. There we go. So this kind of gives you an idea of how uh, how the, the reflection vector, how the skybox is going to work. It gives us this impression that we're kind of looking into the, the object, which is quite cool and will form the basis of our material going forward. Next up, uh, let's do our, well, we'll do our Fresnel. We'll, we'll get our lights, uh, our lights going. So we'll just make ourselves a lerp. Just hold an L and click. Our skybox will be our A value and our B value will be another three vector. We'll make this a parameter, call it the glow color. Just like that, and we'll set it to like a pale blue, sort of like a vibrant electric blue, something, something like that. And then make a multiply by holding an M and clicking, and a scalar parameter by holding an S, and call this one our glow crank. So this will control how much the uh, the edges are going to are going to glow. And we'll set this to a value like two to start with. Hook these up into our multiply. And then the result of that multiply becomes our B value. Cool. So we can we can see how this looks already by uh, well if we just preview uh, preview our our lerp. Uh, yeah, we're not we're not uh, we're not seeing much quite yet. But we have to set up our alpha value, and for that we're going to need a Fresnel and our and our cloud texture. So hold in T and get our texture here. In fact, we'll do it the other way. If I go back to our content browser, just select. The cloud texture and then back in the graph hold in t and click and it will automatically dump in our clouds diffuse with that set we need uh we're gonna need texture coordinates because we're gonna need to manipulate the uvs so if you hold in u and click you'll get the texture coordinates and then we'll need a multiply and another scalar this will be our cloud uv and we'll set this we'll set this to we'll set it to one for now but we'll be manipulating these values afterwards once we instance the material then with that set, we'll go out of this multiply into a panel. Let's make myself some space and then grab another scalar. This will be our cloud speed. Oop. Cloud speed. And we'll set this to something fairly low. 0 0.25 would work. Plug this into speed. And then our panel goes into the UVs of our clouds. So far so good. And then out of our uh, clouds here, let's go into a multiply. And then another scalar, this will be our Fresnel melting. Oh, got some errant characters. Whoa. 
<laughs> for null multi. And set this to something quite high, like uh, 25. We want to really crank up the values out of our, out of our Fresnel light. And then from the multiply, we get our actual Fresnel. Just like that. And the results of the multiply go into our exponent in. This controls the power of our, of our Fresnel. And then if you, well, if we, let's just disconnect that and right click the, the Fresnel and have a preview. Uh, where is it? Just like that, see? So the Fresnel is working fine, but you notice that we're not getting our, our bottom black value. It's not, uh, it's not bottoming out at zero and at one. So let's stop previewing that. We'll plug in our exponent. And then out of here, we need to find ourselves some cheap contrast. This will just uh, sort of more radically, like starkly affect the contrast of our, of, our, uh, of our Fresnel function here. So we'll make a multiply to, I mean, a, a scalar parameter to control it. Call it contrast. Set it to, well, just one for now. And then we'll plug that into contrast. Now, if we preview this contrast node and wait for the, the preview to catch up, there we go. Now we can see kind of what the, what the clouds are doing, how they're moving about the, the model. It looks a little strange right now, but this is all, these are all uh, values and things that we can tweak once the, once the material is sort of a bit, more, a bit more built out. So the results of this contrast become the alpha value of our lerp from before. Move some stuff out so we can see it more clearly. And then we can go straight from this lerp into the emissive color and we'll be able to see in our preview mesh the, the kind of effect as it's sort of building out. So there we see it's a little bit odd at the moment, but uh, we can safely move on from here because we'll be able to adjust all of these values for the, the glow, the clouds, the Fresnel, all of this in the instance once we're finished. Okay, the next thing is, uh, well, another component of this galaxy skin is that there's, uh, there's other sort of shifting shifting colors under it, like a sort of purpley cloudish haze moving about sort of between the, between the Fresnel and the, and the galaxy behind. So let's, uh, let's flesh that out. First of all, we'll need a camera vector. Uh, where's our camera? Camera vector, well, that's the wrong one. The camera vector world space. And we'll have to mask this out because this will return a three value and we're only really dealing with UVs. So we have to mask out the blue and the alpha channels so that we convert our camera vector into a two vector. And we're going to come out of here into a multiply and make ourselves another scalar. This is our cloud vector. And as a default, we can set this up to like three, plug this into our B value of the multiply. And then we'll have to get ourselves a screen position node, which has these values, the viewport UV and the pixel position. We'll be using the viewport UV, which will return a two vector of the dimensions of the screen, like the, the position of the screen, the UVs. So out of here, we'll come into another multiply, uh, which will connect up to our multiply from before. Just like that. And then this goes into another panel. Uh, panner, just like that, into the coordinates. And over here on the left, we'll set our speed, our X speed to something quite low, 0 0.2, and our Y speed at 0 0.1. This was some variations in the speed, and we don't have to you know, add any more, any more values than that. So let's duplicate our cloud texture. We'll uh, plug in our panner into the UVs, and we'll come out of this texture into another multiply, and then another scalar, and this will be our cloud mask the masking value of our clouds. So it determines, sort of it changes the values of the, of the texture so that more or less is coming through depending on how we set this masking value. Let's uh, change the default to like 0 0.5 and then we'll need ourselves another lerp and this will act as the alpha. And our, uh, our A value will be our main sort of tree here that we just built out. And then we'll need another three vector to be our cloud color. So we'll convert that to a parameter, call it cloud color. And we'll make this like a spacey kind of, kind of purple. Let's see what we can find here. Some kind of, something like that, like a, a brightish vibrant purple. And this will act as our B value. And then we plug in the result of our lerp into the emissive. And as a final thing, we can just set some base values here. I know that Fortnite uses quite, uh, quite soft shaded uh, materials, there's not a lot of shine in a, in a Fortnite skin. So, but, uh, well, we'll set our metallic to zero because there's no metals. And we'll get ourselves another scalar. We'll call this one roughness. Set it to something like 0 .0 0 0.5, 0 0.3, go 0 0.3. Get some shine on that model and plug it into roughness. And this, uh, this pretty much fills out, uh, fills out our material going forward. So to, to recap, 
we're using a Fresnel as the alpha of a lerp between our galaxy and the the border the border glow here. You can skip all of this with the cloud textures if you want and just use a uh, a Fresnel just like this. Which once the preview mesh catches up, yeah, so it's adding like a little bit of a rim light, and we can even affect the exponent here with just a straight up uh, scalar. Like if we just used just use the scalar in the exponent, we'll be able to change that, and there would be no clouds. But I thought the clouds added a, a bit of a cool effect, sort of some more, some more animated sort of things going on. So with that done, then we got our camera vector and our screen position. So if we move around the uh, the model like this, if we tumble about, you can see the clouds aren't only moving on their own, but they they move and shift with the angle of the of the camera. Pretty cool. So let's hit save on that. And then back in the editor, we can right click our galaxy material, make ourselves an instance. And then we'll put something in the scene so that we can look at it in action. So if we find our mannequin again, we'll go to the animations folder, get ourselves the idle animation, and we'll set it right there. Find our details panel, and we'll also need our material that we just made, and drag the instance into the, the body slot of the, of the mannequin. And there we see it in its uh, first state, but obviously uh, our values here aren't, aren't what, we're really, what we're really looking for at the end result. So let's open up the instance and we'll just activate all of these, turn on all of these scalars that we made, and then set ourselves some values. So let's start with the, the cloud mask, uh, which is actually pretty good, but we'll, we'll drop down a little bit, 0 0.45. Then there's the, the cloud speed, which will drop down even further, 0 0.015. Yeah, that's a bit better. Just make them sort of slowly, slowly shift around. The cloud UVs, uh, we'll drop that down even more so that they're not quite as... Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. It's pretty good, although the Fresnel's a bit off. If we go to the Fresnel multi, we'll set this down to something like 17, even lower, like 10. The lower it goes, the more of this uh, edge effect is going to be coming through. I think 17 is pretty good. We'll keep it at 17. Looking all right. What else we got to change? So the contrast. We'll set the contrast down really low, like 0 0.04. We'll sort of get more of a sort of wavy, sort of lighter result there. Uh, the glow crank, we can put up a bit, put up to like three. The roughness, we'll set that even lower, I think, 0. Point, we'll, we'll go 0 0.15. Just add some, add some nice shine to the, to the final model. And uh, let's see, what else can we play with? Uh, well, we can have a closer look at some of these things, like the, the world vector, for one, if we drag this around, We'll get it up off, up off black. You can see how it will affect uh, the, the the space scene behind it, like the the reflection vector. Keeping it at black will be exactly as it was, as it was made, like the the proper unaltered resolution of the texture. But we can pick we can pick any color and and muck about with it and see how see see how the bottom texture is going to change like that. Leaving it at black is just the the normal, the standard. Makes it look fine. Makes it look as as it's uh, as it's intended. So let's hit, uh, hit save there. I might actually turn this up a little bit more. If we put that up to 20, eh, I don't know. We'll go, we'll go back to the 15, let's hit save. Uh, the contrast as well. We can put the contrast up a little bit. What does 0.1 look like? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, 0 0.04. Okay, we'll hit save on that. So that's pretty much how to manipulate the values and tweak them to get the kind of result that you like. Uh, but let's see what it looks like with an actual moving player. So go to our world outliner, not the outliner, the world settings, find your default pawn class, which in my case is the third person character. We'll open it up, find our mesh, and then over here in the, the same body element that we changed before, let's get our galaxy material. Make it the instance, hit save, back in the editor, hit play, and there we are. In fact, I'm gonna delete the spare. <laughs> we hit play, and here we go, galaxy skin in Unreal Engine. Similar to how it's made in Fortnite. So that's, uh, that's about the end of the tutorial, uh, really. That there are, there are things, that, things to be tweaked, things that could be refined. I just think this looks really cool, and I love that I got to show it off. Uh, I also should probably say I don't work for Epic. I, don't, I haven't added anything to, to Fortnite or anything like that, sadly. I'd like to. Anyway, I'll uh, yeah, catch you guys in, in, the next, uh, in the next video. And if you, like, if you like it when I make materials and things, my material videos don't tend to do like as well as the gameplay videos, but check out the hex material, carbon fiber, the car paint, uh, the, the car paint tutorial. They're all pretty good. I like them. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Cheers.